having that one bubble tea once in a while is not going to cause you to get diabetes. My name is Dr. Ben Ng and I work in Mount Elizabeth Novena. My clinic is called Arden Endocrinology Specialist Clinic. I think um, when you start to look at Google and so forth, you will see they actually named two forms of diabetes predominantly type 1 and type 2. In simple English, type 1 is a condition where you have no insulin at all. And type 2 is that you have insulin, but it's not working very well. But the reality is that there is a huge spectrum of conditions in between that. And I can tell you now, no diabetes in each patient is the same. At the end of the day, you have, may have 20% of insulin versus 0% or 80%, and you still can have diabetes. Your insulin may work a little bit, very well or not at all. And this is the issue that we have. I think type 1 and type 2 diabetes is really simplifying things too significantly. Not everybody has pure type 1 and pure type 2. And I think the challenge is to actually tell the patients that, listen, there's, uh, it's sometimes not so important to differentiate that, but to try and fix whatever problem it is. I think the easiest way to explain it, and I do that with all my patients, is the simple concept of a phone. If you have a good connection, and you have a phone, you can make a phone call. You have an excellent connection, a phone that's broken, you can't make a phone call. And you, same way, you've got a very good phone and no connection, you can't make a phone call either. The important thing to understand is that they both can be a problem or one can be a problem. And really what you have is one, the connection, the signal here is insulin. The body's telling, hey, I want you to bring the sugars down. Your body is the phone. Does it listen to the insulin? So in type 2, your signal is very strong, your phone's broken. In type 1, your signal is very weak, but your phone's very good. And that is the essential thing. But you do understand sometimes your phone can be a bit problem, signal can be a bit wrong, and different combinations of both. But either way, the end result is you can't see a phone, you can't make a phone call. Similarly in diabetes, the end result is your sugar is high. But what you really need to go back is go back and find out why is your sugar high. Um, not directly, but let's start saying they're not healthy. <laughs> but um, they don't directly cause diabetes per se. Diabetes did not happen because you ate too much sugar, which is a common belief. Diabetes is happening because either your insulin levels are failing or your body's not listening to the insulin. However, what can make it worse, certainly being overweight, consuming way too much sugar and stressing out your insulin reserves, that can do it. But having that one bubble tea once in a while is not going to cause you to get diabetes. Short answer is no way. <laughs> Brown answer the sugars has contained sugar as well, and that's a problem. I think that what many people want to know as well is whether these sugar replacements can potentially uh, uh, help. The important thing to understand is that the sh these sugar replacements and alternatives, they do not contain sugar. So they, if you have diabetes, they will not increase your sugar level. However, the sweet taste itself does cause an insulin response. So it does, it's not as if it doesn't do anything. I think that is food choices is a very complex thing. If you generally like the sweet taste, generally you will start looking for that sweet taste. So the best advice I have is yes, you, if you must have sugar, taking uh, sugar alternatives is not wrong, but the best thing to do is not to take them at all. Simply because then you actually um, accustom your palate to something blender and less sweet. So immediately you will start choosing healthy options. Well, I don't think the diet itself is a risk factor, but being overweight is a risk factor, smoking, obesity, uh, family history, um, things like that can potentially increase the risk. And if you are at increased risk, you should really be thinking about getting screened sooner. The main problem with diabetes is that in the early stages, you don't get symptoms. And therefore, I think it's very important that you consider that to, to screen for diabetes, especially if you've got family, a family history, you have other risk factors as smoking, obesity, and so forth. Um, but other signs that, that indicate that maybe you have diabetes and you really need to seek medical attention, things like blurring of vision, increased thirst, weight loss, passing a lot of urine, and classical things where you see where people say, 
listen, I see ants on my toilet bowl. Uh, you can see increased bubbling in your urine. These are potential signs of diabetes, but you have to appreciate that if, if and when you start developing this, it's usually at the very late stages of diabetes. And that's the problem. So many people, when they come, and you really, what we really want is for people to avoid this, is by the time they come with all these complications, I'll tell you now, A, they're seeing the wrong doctor. You know, I can't help them. And B, in many cases, you can't reverse it anymore. The important thing is to pick up the diabetes early and there are what we call reversible signs. You can see certain signs in the eye, the kidney and so forth, where if you treat them correctly and aggressively, you can reverse these findings. And that's the most important and that's when you want to intervene. I think there are pretty good guidelines out there. I think essentially, everybody should be screened for diabetes after the age of 40 every year. If you have a family history of diabetes or your other risk factors, you may want to start screening earlier, even from the age of 35. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for your regular dose of Asian health information.